Hello Game Makers, this is Game Maker Rob. In this episode we'll be covering the start of a battle system uh, for attacking and you can select uh, different monsters or, or heroes to attack depending on what you want to do and if you manage to kill one of them then they will no longer be able to take part in the battle. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to need is a new font. I'm going to call it FNT menu. Give it a size of 16. And we're going to use a monospaced font called Mana Space. And inside Battle Spawner in the create event, we're going to create a menu array. A menu zero equals attack. A menu one equals magic. A menu two can be item. Third option can be defend. and the fourth can be run. And in the step event, inside the initialization stage, we want menu state is main, the main menu, and menu selected equals zero. So uh, this is which menu are we on? Main magic item and which particular option the menu are we on? Okay. Inside the initialization stage of the player turn, right here, above where we set action state to ready, we want to say menu state equals main and menu selected equals zero. and inside action state ready we want to take player input and we'll say if menu state is equal to main if keyboard check pressed vk up If menu selected minus one is greater than or equal to naught, then menu selected minus equals itself minus one, sorry. Otherwise, menu selected equals array length a menu so when you're pressing up it's either going to go to the next menu item above it or if it's at the very topmost one which will be zero it's going to go to the very bottom and this should be minus one actually sorry Because if there are five items, we want it to go to number four. Cool. And we can copy this, paste it. If we press down, 
if mini selected plus one is less than the size of the array then it can plus one to itself otherwise you want to go back to zero this is how we get like a cyclic cyclical menu system okay so now I want to go into the draw event which is going to be our first time so make a new event for draw and we want to say draw menu I always like to get the code out of the way before I set the coordinates or work out the coordinates. So inside the for loop we'll say menu x is equal to sprite get width spr arrow and menu Y can be sorry, let's do this outside the for loop. So we want it to be from the bottom and we want it to be uh, font, sorry, room height minus font get size. FNC manner menu sorry plus buffer and then you want to times this by array length one D a menu minus one and put this in brackets so it's going to start drawing from um, near the bottom but it allows room to draw all five menu items with a bit of a space between them buffer can be four that's a decent sized space between between lines and we want to say draw set h align fa left from the left draw set v align fa top from the top draw set color c white draw set font fnt menu
and for draw text we want menu X and menu Y plus I times font get size FNT menu plus buffer and then just to be sure you might want to put brackets around these as well I think I'm going to make a new variable as well uh, font size equals font get size FNT menu to make it a bit easy to read should probably do the same for this as well but I'll leave it as it is for now okay so we've done the, the menu items that should be okay and then arrow y can be menu Y. So let's run the game, make sure this is working. So I think I've got a bug somewhere. Let's change this to not having a minus one. I think that's the first thing I missed out. What have I forgotten to do? If menu selected, is that the right variable? Should be. Yeah. If menu selected equals I. Oh, this is why. Yeah. Should be changing it to this. My bad. So we can cycle through the menu system. It doesn't do anything right now. So the next thing we will get working will be like a basic attack. Inside if menu state equals main, I'm going to say if option state is equal to menu. And in the initialization bit for the action state, we want to say option state equal to menu and option target equals no one. And then inside, if menu state equals main, we want to say if keyboard check pressed VK space, if menu selected equals zero. Sorry. If menu selected equals zero and option state, oh, I do want that. Yeah, I'm sorry, we do. If option state is not equal to attack, option state equals attack and we're going to find default monster target with obj monster monster group 
if number is greater than zero, then other dot option target equals ID break. So if it's not attack, then set it to attack. Else, it would already have been set to attack. So if we're pressing space for a second time. Then we want to work out damage and apply it. So. We need to move this up to here. Put it there and uh, hero total damage equals I random range one and hero max damage should be brackets, not square brackets. Sorry. Then we're going to have a script, script damage. We're going to pass um, the damage, so hero, total damage, and the target, which is option target. So, game no. Let the game know which hero we're commanding. And then we want to apply this line here. Set them to attack. And we can just delete this bit now. Because we don't need it, need it anymore. So now we've done that, let's create the script. Call it SCR damage. And total damage equals argument zero. And target equals argument one. And we need to check to see if the target is a hero or monster. So the way I'm going to do it is if target dot sprite index is equal to SBR monsters, then it's a monster. Else, if target dot sprite index is equal to SBR hero heroes than this. So <coughs> if it's a monster um, we're going to need a new variable um, HP but first we're going to check so we're going to say if total damage
tiger.hp minus equals total damage. If target.hp is less than or equal to zero, then target.number they lose one. If target.number is less than or equal to zero, target.dead equals true. Otherwise, target.hp equals ga monsters target.type and then one. So let's just put some comments. So target is a monster. Make monster lose HP. If HP is less than or equal to zero, reduce group by one. There are no more monsters left. Group is dead. If there's a monster left, refill HP. If it's a hero, then we're going to affect the array directly, the global array. So if target sprite index equals SPR heroes, uh, GA heroes target dot index and it's going to be two minus equals total damage if ga heroes target dot in index two is less than or equal to zero Target dot dead equals true. Let's put some comments. Target is a hero. Make hero lose HP. If hero loses all HP, hero is dead. So we need to add a few variables now. So inside battle spawner, step event, when we create the monsters, we want to say monster group dot dead equals false and monster group dot HP equals monster group dot type uh, one. It's going to be an array. GA monsters. There we go. And hero dot dead equals false. All we're really going to be using the dead variable for is to, for like a visual display because we're already checking here um, if the hero doesn't have more than zero hit points, he's not going to get added. So you won't, you won't be, able to be able to control him. Okay, so now we need uh, some visual clues or cues for the player. So inside the draw event, want to say if 
menu state is equal to main then draw this and actually want to say uh, if option state is not equal to attack and then if option state does equal attack I'm going to draw an arrow to draw sprite and we want this one extended SPR arrow zero and we want option target dot X plus sprite get width SPR monsters divided by two Option target dot y. I think that should be okay for the y. One one rotation two seventy. I'm going to turn it into a down arrow. Color c white alpha one. Let's just check this. Okie doke. So let's run the game, see if I've missed anything out. So you can see the eyeball lost the guy. We went from three to two. Uh, the only thing we missed out is we're not resetting the menu back to main. So as soon as you attack with the first player, they all just attack in the unison. So step event and play turn action ready. What we want to do is reset option state. We want actually so after everything else inside this if statement so after we press space we want to say option state is equal to menu yeah so let's test this now so I'll move the menu no other option works. Press attack. Eyeballs lose a guy. A couple of things I'm not happy with right now. Uh, the first one is we can't choose different monsters. Should be easy to fix. You're also going to be able to choose heroes to attack. So, in case one of them is asleep, you might want to hit him to wake, wake them up. Um, we don't really want the menu to appear right away. I want it to appear after the hero has gone back to his start position. So, the final thing we're going to tackle for this episode is going to be selecting different targets. We're going to need two more DS lists for this. Um, and they're going to be very similar to the ones we've already got, but they're going to be more persistent. Um, I tried it a few different ways, and uh, it's just a lot easier and a lot better to use two extra DS lists. So, if we go to OBJ Battle Spawner, and in the Create Event, uh, we're, we're going to say DS Target Monsters equals minus one. 
and ds target heroes equals minus one and clean up event copy this paste it I want ds target heroes and ds target monsters let's make sure we've got it spelled correctly cool so now inside the step event where we create the heroes we're going to say uh, let's think for a minute sorry yeah let's add it here so ds list add value and id is going to be ds target heroes and value is going to be hero and in monster group we're going to say ds list add ds target monsters and it's going to be monster group so we're basically saving the ids into the these lists um, we need to create these lists as well at the start so copy this and before here we're going to put it at, at the start actually we can just copy and paste it from the cleanup event want these two replace this there we go so we're checking if the list exists and destroying it and now we can say ds list create ds target heroes equals ds list create and ds target target monsters equals ds list create there we go let's put some comments uh, create target lists destroy previous game objects or battle objects right so we're adding the hero IDs to the right list and we're adding the monster IDs to the right list and we want to remove them when they've lost all of their hit points so inside script damage where we're saying target dot dead equals true we want to say uh, pause equals ds list find index and we're searching ds target monsters and the i i the position of the id we're searching for is uh, sorry target is the id for the position we're trying to find and then we want to say uh, ds list delete ds target monsters pause so just going to re-explain that because I don't think I did a great job just then so when a monster uh, loses all of its monsters when, the, when a monster group loses all of its monsters we're setting the target to dead uh, we're trying to find the location inside the uh, DS target monsters list of where this particular monster is found and that gives us pause and now we've got the position we can now delete that monster from the from the list what this is going to allow us to do what this is all for basically is so what we can press up and down and left and right it will switch between monsters and between heroes that's what all this is is going to achieve so we want to do the same for the heroes so if the target hero is dead we want to say pause equals ds list find index the index we're checking is target heroes and we want we're searching for the target id and then once we find that we can say ds list delete and we're deleting from the heroes list and 
using the position we've just found. And there we go. This is going to allow us to remove any dead players or monsters from the list. I'm just thinking that um, if there's going to be spells or items that can resurrect uh, heroes and monsters, uh, we're probably going to have to make a new list for that. But for everything we're going to do in this tutorial, uh, this is going to work perfectly, especially for uh, magic, healing items, and attacking. Now we've done that, we can go inside the step event for the battle spawner. Uh, we've created the lists. So inside the ready action state, and let's just find where it ends. Yeah, we're going to do it after press the space. So, if option state is equal to attack, if option target dot sprite index is equal to SBR monsters. Now we're going to check for some keyboard presses. If keyboard check pressed VK left or keyboard check pressed VK right. Just get some more parentheses on that. So if we're pressing left or right, we, we want to switch between heroes and monsters. So we're going to say um, selected actor equals zero. It's going to be a new variable. We're going to initialize it in a minute. And we want to say option target equals DS target heroes. Zero, which will, it gives us the first entry in the list. And I'm going to say if keyboard check pressed VK up. I'll start with down actually. VK down. Then if selected actor plus one is less than DS list size DS target monsters then selected actor can increase by one. Otherwise, we want to send it back to zero. I want to say option target equals DS target monsters. Selected actor. We can do that here as well, actually. Okay, and if keyboard check pressed VK up, so if Selected actor minus one is greater than or equal to zero. Then 
then selected actor minus minus otherwise if it's on zero selected actor equals ds list size ds target monsters minus one and then set option target I'm sorry, it shouldn't be, it should be um, this symbol, not an exclamation mark. That's the wrong accessor. Let's put down some more. We don't really need comments for this. So now we've done this, we want to make one for heroes. And actually, we're going to put an else statement and put all of this inside the else statement. Just to make sure we're not getting the wrong thing. So if it's the hero sprite, left or right, reset the variable, switch to monsters. If we're pressing down, check that it's not going to go past the size of how many heroes there are. Looks okay so far. And the other thing we need to do is when we set option state to attack, so we're inside menu state equals main, and if we press space, and if we if option state is not set to attack, then we're setting it to attack, and we also want to say selected actor equals zero. Doke. Let's run the game, see if there's any errors, something that I've missed. So attack, we can cycle between them. Although the order is kind of weird. If we press down, it goes up, and we press up, it goes down. Uh, if we press right, then the order is okay. That must be to do with how I uh, set the positions for the groups up. So if I switch them around, it'll work a lot better. And you can see as well that the uh, hero sprites are being drawn over the arrow. So we'll just fix that and we'll call it a day for now. If we now go into the draw event for the battle spawn object, to make sure we're drawing the arrow over the heroes, uh, we're going to put a check in here, so we're going to say if option target dot sprite index is equal to SBR monsters, then we want to do this. else support comment if it's a hero then we just need to change this as well I 
Let's just test it. Uh, that did not work. <laughs> Let's check the wires for these sprites. So I think this is going to be why because there's a space above the head for the monster object uh, sprites. So back into battle spawner. Make this a bit bigger. So we're going to say Y. Uh, so inside, if option target dot sprite index is equal to SPR heroes, for the Y coordinate, we're going to do option target dot Y minus. Let's check the. I don't know. Let's try um, sprite get height SPR arrow. Try this. It's better. Let's try and kill a wizard and see what happens. Not dead yet. So now we've killed the wizard, we can no longer select no longer select him. And he shouldn't attack either. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to end it there for, for today. Uh, next week we will improve things significantly. Uh, we'll have, uh, I'm planning to have like a better user interface uh, with some floating damage numbers displaying that kind of thing. So I will see you next time. Bye for now.